Hey, you guys. Yeah, you guys. You guys got a new package today. You got a new package. It just arrived. Ossia Jr. What do you think? It's going to be full of awesome birdie stuff. New treats, new foods, new bedding. I think you guys are going to love it. So hello everyone and welcome to a vlog. I'm not sure quite how this is going to play out, but we got a package for the birds today and I thought I would show you guys um, what's inside the package because it's really cool. It's all sorts of bird stuff. How often do you get to see a box opened up that's going to be full of delicious bird seeds and really fun nesting material that I bought for these little tweeters over here. As most of you guys know, these are my Gouldian finches. They are an endangered species from Australia, endangered primarily due to habitat loss. Um, thankfully, the pet trade has a really healthy population of them. A lot of people actually tried to sustain a wide diversity of genetic genetics with having lots and lots of different genetic pools for the Gouldian finches in the pet trade. Um, and I, to my knowledge, the pet trade didn't really damage the populations too much because they cut off um, collections in the wild quite a while ago. To my knowledge, and this may, this may just be I've misheard or have been mistold something, but these guys are doing pretty poorly in the wild right now due to mite infestations and a lot of habitat loss. A lot of the grasses that they rely on in the wild are no longer showing up where they're supposed to due to bushfires or fires that are in intentionally set by agricultural uh, little communities, maybe like farmers who are trying to clear some land in order to graze their cattle. The, these guys end up suffering as a result. My little tweeters here end up not having enough grass in the wild to eat the seeds that they need to survive and just not having some of the very uh, kind of niche little areas they decided to lay their eggs in. They like to cavity lay. They like to lay their eggs in cavities in eucalyptus trees and other, other types of trees. And if you get rid of all of those trees or they burn down from a fire, then you run out of the cavities, and so nesting space is actually a big problem for their population in the wild as well. You can actually see little nest boxes in trees that scientists have been building to try to get them to breed, even though it's just like, oh, we made a pretend branch for you to lay your nest in. It actually works out really well. I might link you guys to the articles that I've been reading about that uh, in the video description if I remember. It's really awesome to look into. But long story short, my the finches! My parents started breeding them kind of like as a therapy project a while ago and then my mom was like oh you have to take a pair you have to take a pair so when I visited her I went ahead and I got a pair of birds and she set me up and then the birds had babies a couple years ago and then she brought me more birds and I gave her all those babies and then I have Ossiae, Ossiae Jr. who's his son, Persimmon who's Ossiae's mate and Ossiae Jr.'s mom, uh, Blueberry, Pumpkin, Strawberry who are all of uh, the same Clutch, which is like the same sibling set of birds from Ossii and Persimmon. And then I've got Silverberry up in the corner there, and Starburst, who is the yellow one. And those are two males I've been trying to hook up with the females that I have from Ossii and Persimmon. So I do try to breed them occasionally. Um, and sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But that long babbling aside, we have a box right here. We have a really nice box. Look at this box. Ooh, it's so awesome. Really awesome box. So I want to go ahead. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to see what's inside. I know what's inside. It costs me a bit of money. The cool thing about owning um, finches, though, is you pretty much only have to spend like a significant amount of money on them, maybe twice a year, uh, to make sure that they have enough to eat. <laughs> so just kind of update the seeds. And otherwise, you feed them snacks from what I might just have in the kitchen. And they do pretty well. But yeah, let's, let's, let's look at our goodies. Let's look at the bird goodies that we bought. <laughs> Do, do, do. All right, so right here up at the very top, let's see what we have. And a lot of this stuff is going to be to get my birds up in what they call breeding condition. I'm gonna to try to make sure that my birds are in top shape and ready for the breeding season. And to do that, you start feeding your birds a good healthy breeding diet and preparing them months ahead of when you expect them to start building nests and laying eggs. And here we go. So this is some cheap nesting material. It's biodegradable. Um, it's just, I hear that they like this Bermuda grass and it's from ladygouldianfinch.com all this stuff is I normally shop from her or lady and Gouldian, lady or like Gouldianfinch uh, CA, and I shop between the two of them I think they're actually sisters and they're really great at knowing the know-how about Gouldian finches so this is Bermuda grass and this will be used as a nesting material so I actually make the nest believe it or not and this is gonna sound kind of silly but I make the nest out of um, oatmeal containers I use oatmeal containers in order to like 
simulate the hollow, like the cavity that I was talking about that'll be in the branches. And it's kind of a circle thing. And so you have just the oatmeal container where it's just a nice circle, like, a, like the inside of a branch, like a tree branch. And the birds love it. My parents started using ice cream containers and oatmeal boxes, like little oatmeal containers. And you clean them out real well, you wipe them down so there's no dust or anything. And so far, all of our Goulian finches have loved them as nesting spots. So that's why we use those. And then, yeah, so this is the nesting material I got. Usually I tear up, um, like, this fiber stuff you can get at the craft store. But I thought, you know what, let's just try this this time. I'm going to see if they like it or not. If it doesn't stay as fresh as I need it to, I'll go back to using the stuff that I had from the uh, craft store. So if we do that, I'll show you guys that. Bermuda grass! Yay! It was very cheap. I hope so. It's just literally grass. <laughs> And then, ooh, she always sends these cool little booklets. So this will tell you about the ideal breeding condition, how to make sure they have strong bones. Strong bones and enough calcium is essential if you are even going to dare to begin to breed any kind of bird. You need to make sure that they have very strong bones. You need to make sure that the females especially have been getting regular amounts of breeding calcium. So this will be really fantastic. Oh, look at this. It has the little herb salad. They love their herb salad. There's like, yeah, 22 herbs in here. And I put it in a little shallow container. They actually have some. See over there? Doo -doo -doo. You can see the birds like right there. It looks like blueberry. Yeah, that's blueberry sitting right there. She's sitting up at the top container, and that is where they have their extra snacks that they get. So there's herb salad in there right now. They like it a lot. So I can flip through this in a little bit. This will be great just to kind of talk about the essential like care of the Gouldian finch, which is not very complicated, but if you want to take good care of any animal, you really have to always stay constant on your research. It's very, very important. Yeah, premium blend. So it's kind of like, there's the herb salad again. <laughs> it's kind of like a... Uh, a cool little booklet that will summarize what they sell and what you can get for the birds. You don't need everything. This is just like with any any pet supply group. You don't need everything that they're pitching your way, but it's just useful to have a lot for your animals. Here we go. Yeah, I really wanted to get this. This is the premium nesting material sample, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, this is the premium super mix. And I think there's, yeah, I got a bag of it. I got a sample bag and I got just like the normal bag because I wanted more. And this is premium super mix. And let me see if it'll read off what's in here. Uh, Sisal jute coconut fibers. Um, let's see. And then there's also cotton pods and enriched horse hair. I'm not sure how you enrich horse hair, but I thought that would be really fun. Oh, look, they even have little explanations. Okay, hang on. I got to open up this Ziploc bag and let us take a peek at what this has to say about the different kinds of material. Do you know which nesting material your birds like best? Place different nesting material samples in your bird's cage and see which one they choose to build their nest. And let's see, Australian finches apparently enjoy the sisal fiber, the jute fiber. Yeah, the burlap bags is kind of what you tear up. So this actually looks, this fiber right here actually looks identical to the stuff I would get from the craft store and it takes a while to rip apart. So I was being a wimp and I just ordered like a little sampler pack of these. And then we've got the Bermuda grass, which they've got a huge bag of right there. Gives your birds the feeling of a real nest. Coconut husk fiber. Fiber needed to build freestanding nests. And they actually don't build freestanding nests, but I think they'll enjoy that. I've never given them so much nesting material to pick from. And the other reason I did that is because it'll be really good enrichment for them. So hopefully they'll be able to enjoy that. There we go. Then we've also got... Ah, the Finch and Canary Breeding and Molting Blend contains canary uh, grass seed, white proso millet, niger, Japanese millet, flax, rapeseed, golden German, sesame seed, black lettuce seed, Siberian millet, and poppy seeds. And so when it says breeding and molting, that's actually for when the birds need to be in top form. They need more fat in their diet than usual, more protein. They need to be able to have the energy they need to court each other. They're over there singing at one another right now. They, and I know, it's a lot of work. Look at all this stuff for these tiny birds. <laughs> but it's, it's, they're, they're dear to my heart, so this means a lot. If we do go to China, it's going to be really hard to like sell those guys or have to like leave them behind. Oh, gosh. 
But yeah, breeding and molting is what I would feed to the birds that I plan on trying to breed this year or the ones who are finishing up a molt. Ossii is actually finishing up his molt. He has a wonky donkey molt this year. So he is going to be put in a cage where he focuses on this. However, you do not want the birds who are not going to be breeding to eat this. At least, and this is all to my understanding. I'm not an expert. I'm just learning. Oh gosh. <laughs> And boom, there we go. And then this is the Finch and Canary blend normal. And this is the resting season blend. And this has less protein, less fat than the other blend. And the reason I need to feed them this is because if you feed them a super high fat diet, and this should have, it doesn't say on it, but if you feed them like a really high fat diet um, when they're not needing to have all that extra energy of nest building, raising chicks, or trying to court one another, you can get obese birds. And that's very bad for them because when you're a bird you kind of need to be light on your feet to be able to like fly around right guys fly around have a good day oh they're so cute i love them so much so that is for everybody who i'm not going to be breeding this year and then this is that calcium i was talking about this is essential you don't put it in their water every day for um this is just calcium that you mix into their water it's much better it, pretty much if you have any bird in my opinion and again this varies this i'm a hobbyist i'm not an expert i'm not even an advanced hobbyist i'm just a dabbler whose mom gave her some beautiful birds and i do my best for them <laughs> <laughs> so do all of your own research but to my understanding all the birds really need calcium if they are really going to be like trying to lay eggs to keep their um to keep their body healthy their bone healthy and this is supposed to have the vitamin d3 that is easily bioavailable which means if you give a calcium but you don't have d3 somewhere uh, either through direct sunlight exposure or like in their diet somehow then that calcium often can build up in the bloodstream, to my understanding, or if you feed them too much calcium, it can build up in the bloodstream. You have to have it bind correctly. This is getting back into when I was in nursing school <laughs> and studying physiology and nutrition. It's pretty complicated. So, I mean, this counts for humans, too. If somebody throws something at you and they're like, take this, this is good for you, this is a great vitamin, it's going to help you out, then you need to do your research and make sure that that vitamin you get access to if you don't need another vitamin. For example, if you are eating leafy greens, uh, as a human and you're not eating any fat with those leafy greens like you're not having a little bit of fat on your salad for example or you're not having a little bit of avocado on the side you are probably not getting what you need from that lettuce so you skip out on all of the health benefits of lettuce if you don't have the other minerals available to you so I'm babbling now because I'm like digging around in that store but basically always do your research guys especially if somebody hands you a supplement because sure that could be some awesome calcium but what's the point of giving your bird calcium if they're not getting the d3 because then it's not actually going in their body it's just going right out the other end and that counts for almost everything with the kinds of foods that we eat as humans and the, the nutrition that we have as humans too uh, like i take um because we are vegan birdos <laughs> you guys are vegan too i guess <laughs> except when i feed you eggs which they actually need because it's good for the calcium back to the calcium but when i have my um vitamin c or my iron i always take it with vitamin c and then i know that i'm getting enough iron and so that's really important. So that was a lot of babble. You don't give this to the birds every single day. Um, you give it to them, like, depending on if you're breeding them or not, just a few, like, every other day or so. Um, feed once or twice per week to non-breeding birds and five times per week to breeding birds. Don't overfeed them. It can mess up their bloodstream. End of story on that. Oh, wow, these are so much bigger than I thought they would be. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so these are little snack containers. They were, like, I don't know, something ridiculous, like 70 cents. Like, really cheap. These at the pet store would have been, like, what, $1.99 at least or something like that. I can't do twisty ties with one hand. No, help me. Help me. Where's Chips when I need him? I can't. Basically, you guys get the idea. <laughs> These are little treat containers because I have so many new things to feed the birds and so many new snacks for them. I wanted to get them little containers that I could put in just like the day's fresh food. I'm going to try to start convincing my birds to eat um, soft foods and vegetables, which they aren't really into right now. Birds are extremely hesitant to try new foods, but we're going to try it out. So I got these so that I'll have smaller containers to just be able to put them in in the morning and be like, okay, they didn't touch the apple today, but maybe they'll touch the apple tomorrow. And then I can just dump it without having to like put a ton of food in one container. So these are just like little extra containers. My birds, maybe they're a little spoiled. 
Ah, here we go. And I needed this. This is Hardy Bird, a great vitamin and mineral formula. Um, and my, I think my mom used to use this and she didn't have any left to send it to me when they stopped. They sold all their birds when they had to move. Um, and she sent me a ton of stuff. I have a box that's like twice this size, just full of bird vitamins. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, but this is going to be mostly for Ossie right now so he can get over that molt and everybody can get ready and feel nice and healthy and happy so that they are ready to start their breeding or at least just be at peak condition. Let's see, and then this one, concentrated high potency vitamin mineral supplement for all birds. Do do do, nutrients for healthy immune system functioning at all stages of development, yay. Feed to young and adult birds daily year round. Add one small, evenly dispersed pinch per bird on, so like a tiny pinch. I actually used to have a measuring spoon that said pinch, smidgen, and dash. I want that again. My, my grandma gave it to me and it was the cutest thing. Um, on fruit, vegetables, soaked seed or soft food, or add one level teaspoon to five quarts clean drinking water. Oh boy, there's so much stuff to add to the water. So this might go on in the water maybe some days, but it might go on food other days. So it might go on the soft food and soaked seeds um, some days too. So we'll probably do some seed soaking videos together too. Anyway, I'm babbling too long. We're down to the last box. <laughs> Take that box. All right, let's see what's in here. I actually don't remember. I remember the bedding. I knew I got the really cool premium bedding, so I don't know what's in here. So hang on a second. You guys, it's still a mystery. I still don't remember what this is. Dun, 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 dun. What is it? It's a bunch of peanuts. It's a bunch of... Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to set this up today and try it out. It's a bird bath. It's so much bigger than I thought it would be. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, let's move that out of the way. All right. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Here's all the birdie treats. Whew. It was a little pricey to take care of them like this, but I got the fancy stuff. And like I said, the nice thing about having finches is I only really have to do this kind of shopping maybe like once every few months. So it's a lot cheaper than when I used to feed my German Shepherd puppy. Like this all costs less than like one month of her food and treats. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is the bird bath. I'm going to have to snap it together with both hands later. But you can get the idea. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. How am I going to fit this? Okay, let's see. So that is where that is. All right, Bardos. So I guess I would put it I would put it right here. Okay, so, and pardon the poop. I have to clean that almost every day. There's a lot of birds in here. Um, so I guess I would just put it, like, right inside on this lip down here. And then they would have a brand new bird bath to try out. So that's so exciting, you guys. What do you think? It's all for you. All these treats for you. We'll have to see what you think about your big old bath. <laughs> right now they're not that impressed. Hi, guys. Hi. Why won't you ever let the camera get close to you? Why? Oh my gosh, I love my birds. Good job, Starburst. He's a pretty old bird. You can kind of tell looking at him because he's a little scruffy. But yeah, there's my birdos and there are all those treats. And yeah, so <laughs> we'll have to see. I'm really excited. I mean, look at all that stuff. That's a lot of stuff. It's almost like my birthday present to myself. So there we go. And I'll get them set up, you guys. And yeah, it'll just be fun to do these casual vlogs showing you what's going on with my animals, what's going on with my gardens, what's going on with life. And yeah, we'll see um, how they do on the food. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take... Uh, this out here, this thing you see out here, is meant to put bird cages in. One, two, three bird cages. I never use the bottom one because Goulian finches don't like to be that low. And I don't like putting birds towards the ground. But I'm going to bring that inside. It's holding a bunch of plants right now and seedlings that I'm going to be starting. But I'm going to bring it inside, put this back outside so it can take care of the seedlings for me. And put two cages in there and they're going to go right here next to the window so that the birds can kind of have nice bright light. They can really get some of that D3 moving and grooving for them and I can keep an eye on them while I work and so once I get that all set up I will be able to put in their breeding seed I'll be able to put in the nest boxes I'll be able to put in their like nesting material and I think it's gonna be really fun to see what kind of nesting material they want to use and we'll share all of those little adventures with you so I'll have to see if I can do a video to summarize like which birds are which pretty soon so you guys can know who's who and we can follow their adventures because I, these are my best friends. These are the guys that stay with me all day and you hear them in almost all my videos because they're, they're chatty, adorable little things and I would really love to share their lives with you. So thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Right guys?
Yeah. Bye, guys.